Welcome to A Day in the Life of a Mahjong Player. It's Mahjong Saturday, so I am on my way to play Mahjong. We have five people today. We're going to play from 11 to 4. We kind of shortened our day. And really, since we're kind of heading into summer, I think that's probably a good idea. Because it takes me about 50 minutes to get to the venue. I'll get home. I should get home by 5 in time to either go out with my husband or have a nice dinner. So four o'clock's okay with me. So we'll see what happens today. I hope it'll be a good day, which leads me to my topic for the day. And I wanna preface this by saying, potential negative content, you've been warned. So if you don't want to hear anything negative, you may want to turn this video off. Otherwise, let's talk about mean people. Have you ever played in a group where one or more of the players were mean? And what I mean by mean is, well, first of all, an easy explanation would just be flat rude. Rude people just being grumpy and gruff, aggressive in their playing. Have you had experiences with that? And if you have, how, how do you deal with it? I mean, really, it is, all those things are kind of subjective. And if you have a thick skin, then maybe that kind of thing doesn't really bother you. But there are people who are more sensitive, like myself. I'm, I'm sensitive. You know, I try to let things roll off my back. But sometimes, you know, I, I'm sensitive and things people say hurt my feelings. And if, it, if, if those sorts of things make me uncomfortable, well, I, I would imagine they would make other people uncomfortable too. We've even lost members because of mean players coming to play. And you know, that, that um, really goes against the whole purpose of meetup. You wanna welcome people and you wanna have a friendly environment, an environment where everybody comes to have a good time. So how do you deal with these mean people? Do you have guidelines that you expect your players to abide by? And if so, how do you police it? Do you give warnings? Do you just ask them to leave? In private groups, do you have these kinds of problems? I haven't played in private settings very much. Every now and again, I have been an alternate, um, just for, you know, not even for long term, just every now and again, I jumped in because somebody couldn't play. And I've not really seen any meanness in these groups. And I wondered, is this isolated to meetup or open venues like at a rec center or senior center, or maybe at the local synagogue? And I wondered if private groups had these same kinds of situations. I guess in a private setting, you would just ask them not to return and end that relationship and find a new player. That's a, I, what I imagine would happen. But in bigger groups, like in Meetup, there's always an organizer or a leader of, of that event. So I can, I can see that if any bad behavior occurred that that leader would step in and take care of it but what about in these open venues like senior centers um, or rec centers and synagogues and they just have an open play where you drop in and play is there anybody there to monitor behavior I mean it's not like anyone's gonna have a knockdown drag out that would be kind of hilarious actually to see ladies have a cat fight about Mahjong. I've never seen it go to that level, but it's been close actually. So I wanted to have a little conversation about that. And I even was thinking about posting it on Facebook, but I just was afraid that that negative, it would turn into just to a big rant. And I really don't want this to be a rant session. I, I was hoping that it would be more solution oriented. And maybe we could together come up with ways to handle situations brought on by mean people. So in the comment section, 
let me know about your experiences and how you've handled it in the past or even that you currently are going through. I would love to hear about that. You know, my meetup is a work in progress. So, um, you know, we're always trying to improve the game and improve the atmosphere. And the do's and don'ts that I have in, in our charter have been pretty, uh, I guess, stable for a while now. But I'm always open to new ideas. So if you have any ideas on how to help in these situations, I would love to hear about it. So I am going to come back on after our game today. And um, we'll close out the vlog on my way home. And I'll let you know how the day went. We just got out of our Mahjong game. And it was fabulous. We had a really great time. We ended up playing five all day. When our sixth player came, one of the other ladies decided to call it a day and go spend some time with her husband. So we had five all day and I broke my losing streak. I won today, get ready for it, $10.55. Woohoo! I broke my losing streak. I'm so happy. Now hopefully I can just hang on to that winning streak. That would be so nice, especially online. I need to ramp up in my belt on all my different styles online. So as far as uh, drama today, it was pretty much drama free, but we did have a snafu with food. Somebody ordered a medium well burger and it was raw, so she was not happy. Um, and that happens, but I'll tell you, Abbott's Bar and Grill in Johns Creek, they are fabulous. They are so nice, and I personally like the food. I think it's really great. It's bar food, and so, you know, burgers and such. So I think they do a fabulous job, and their customer service is spot on. So good job, Jim, and thank you so much, Ryan, for letting us play there. Abbott's Bar and Grill in Johns Creek. Go there. Check it out. If you live in Atlanta, that is. I mean, I suppose you could fly in and have lunch at Abbott's Bar and Grill. But anyway, it was a really great time. And I obviously had a good time. Thank goodness I even got some dots. I'm so happy about that. And now I am at the Korean market across the street because I need to get veggies for our kebab barbecue on Monday. I thought I would share my Asian market haul for you today. All this I got for $88. They have great produce. If you have an Asian market here in your area, check it out. So I got um, some thick soy sauce. I'm going to use this when I make um, chop suey. I got poison sauce. That's really good for a dipping sauce or a glaze. You can use it in a lot of different things. I got some rice vinegar. For sauteing or um, stir fry basically. Then I have uh, bamboo shoots and water chestnuts for the pantry. I got um, some seafood mushrooms. I just really like these mushrooms in um, whenever I cook Asian food. I just I love these. And then um, I got lots of look at these um, peppers. Look how pretty they are. Great. They're a great shape and they're um, just perfect for our barbecue on Monday. We're gonna put these on skewers and serve with um, some steak. I forget what kind of steak I got. It's not tenderloin, it's something else. But anyway, um, I also got some baby bok choy. I love having that in my stir fry. I got some beautiful leeks. Look how pretty those are, they're so clean. I just love the Asian market produce. And I got some celery. You can't have chop suey without celery. And I got some soybeans. And I have some of those um, bean sprouts in there. And then I thought I would do uh, pork chop suey. So I got some pork cutlets. And I'm gonna put one in the freezer and one for chop suey. And then I also got, look at this, isn't that pretty? I mean, if you eat meat, I guess. 
This is um, boneless chuck short rib. So I thought I'd make like a broccoli beef with this and see how that goes. So I think this was a pretty, oh gosh, yeah, look, I got some mahjong snacks too. This is um, pot stickers, but instead of the sort of dumpling shape, it's actually almost like a flattened egg roll, and this is crispy rice paper. So they're a little more crispy than um, the steamed pot sticker, and you bake them. You don't have to fry these. I think that's what they said. Oh, they did fry them. Heating instructions. Okay, I thought this was, um, you just put a little bit of oil, so that's all right. I was hoping I could bake them, but I guess to get them crispy, you gotta fry them. So I'll just fry them in a little bit of oil, um, but they were really good. I tried them at the store. So if you have an Asian market in your area, go in there and check it out. But I have to warn you, don't take photos. I got in a little trouble because I was taking photos that I'm gonna post at the end of this vlog so you can see what it's like. But don't do that because you'll get in trouble. Well, I didn't really get in trouble. They just said, no photo, no photo. So don't take photos. Here are some pictures of the Asian market. Here's their produce section. Look at all that produce. And it is very affordable. This is their seafood uh, department and they've got fresh seafood here. This is the, look at all the soy sauce. This is the soy sauce and sauce aisle on this other side. I didn't take a picture of it, but there's vinegars, all kinds of vinegars and, you know, uh, hot pepper sauce, chili sauce, poison sauce, things like that. It's a great aisle. I always go down this aisle. And then I also go down the canned veggie aisle just so I can stock up my pantry. So this is where I get uh, bean sprouts, or not bean sprouts, but um, uh, bamboo shoots bamboo shoots and water chestnuts. Sometimes I get the baby corn as well. And then finally, I always stop at this kitchen area where you can get uh, rice cookers and utensils and things like that. So always um, check out that area when you go to the Asian market. It's really a great time. Just make sure you don't take photos. As I said before, you might get you know, in some trouble. So I wouldn't want that to happen to you. Anyway, if you like these kind of haul videos in this day in the life of a Mahjong player, give me a thumbs up and I'll do more of them. I try to go to that Asian market right after Mahjong because it's right across the street. Super convenient. And um, I love getting my produce there. I, I don't garden because I have bad knees. So um, since I don't really garden, I need to get my produce uh, from somewhere. And if I don't find good buys at Costco, I go to my Asian markets because they have great produce. All right, so I guess I will see you next week when I do another episode of A Day in the Life of a Mahjong Player. And between now and then, may all your picks be keepers.